Roswell, Alien Interview, Introduction, The Mystery of UFOs and Extraterrestrials. If you have studied UFO phenomena at all, you are already familiar with the infamous Orson Welles radio broadcast of War of the Worlds and the Invasion from Mars on October 30, 1938. This fictitious radio dramatization of an invasion of Earth by aliens incited a global UFO and extraterrestrial hysteria long before the UFO crash near Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. During the past 60 years since the alleged Roswell crash, there have been tens of thousands of reported UFO sightings. A global hysteria has emerged from evidence of what was presumed to be extraterrestrial phenomenon. Concurrently, the unrelenting denial of this phenomenon by the U.S. government has precipitated an uninterrupted flurry of accusations, counter-accusations, cover-up, conspiracy theories, lunatic fringe speculations, scientific investigations, etc., etc., ad nauseum, and a growing multitude of similar alleged close encounters. My first thought when I received the package of documents from Mrs. McElroy was, this is just another set of Majestic 12 documents. I'm referring to a mysterious package reportedly received by mail in 1984, shortly after the death of the last surviving member of the so-called Majestic 12 Committee, alleged to have been organized by President Harry Truman shortly after the Roswell incident in 1947. There are several similarities to the Majestic 12 documents and the package I received from Mrs. McElroy, in the case of the former, an envelope was sent from an anonymous sender with no return address. It contained an undeveloped roll of film, that's all. On the roll of film were photos of documents that were assumed to be authentic by the recipient and his colleagues, whose vested interest, that is, livelihood, depend heavily on attracting public notice and credibility to themselves as leading authorities on the subject of UFO phenomena. They have worked relentlessly since then to discover proof that the documents are authentic. Of course, government agencies deny everything alleged in the documents and anything having to do with the subject of extraterrestrials in general. In addition, the subject has been so thoroughly overwhelmed with obvious false reports, discredited sources, hearsay, manufactured falsehoods, misunderstandings, missing information, added inapplicable information, and a myriad of other conflicting complexities which have made the subject laughable or unapproachable as a science. This may be intentional or simply a reflection of the general chaos and barbarism that is humanity. As for government denials and cover-ups, the events of September 11, 2001 have made it abundantly apparent to me that the U.S. government has destroyed any vestige of trust the American people and the world may have harbored even through the Vietnam War Watergate and many similar betrayals in the honesty of the American government, military, and intelligence community by blatantly lying to its own people about almost anything and everything. In spite of vast numbers of UFO sightings, innumerable reports of alien abductions, and close encounters with extraterrestrials that pervade nearly all of prehistoric and recorded human history, I found only one underlying, unifying, undisputable, axiomatic common denominator that permeates all of this data. Assuming that the subjective reality or beliefs of individuals is acceptable evidence, there has been no universally agreed upon proof that UFOs and or extraterrestrial life forms exist, whether based on government admission, physical evidence, circumstantial or subjective data. There are several deductions I can infer from the lack of agreement, government admission, or physical evidence that such things are real, that if verified may lead to a workable solution to the mystery. Domain deduction. In spite of an enormous collection of subjective, circumstantial, and objective evidence of extraterrestrial activity on and around Earth, the existence, intentions, and the activities of extraterrestrials remain hidden and mysterious. Domain deduction. Universally agreed upon proof of extraterrestrial life 
based on subjective data, government admission, physical and circumstantial evidence, are subject to conflicting vested interests, which has made such proof unattainable. Collectively, these deductions beg the obvious question. If extraterrestrial life forms exist, why is there no consistent, forthright, open, interactive communication between mankind and extraterrestrials? Fortunately, subjective reality does not require evidence or proof. Therefore, I decided to write this book in order to pass along a subjective communication I received from Mrs. McElroy to other people who may be interested in it. Personally, I'm not assuming anything I received from Mrs. McElroy is in any way authentic, with the exception of the envelope and the paper inside the envelope. I cannot substantiate any of it. Indeed, I can't truly verify that there ever was such a person as Mrs. McElroy other than a voice I heard over the phone in 1998. The voice could have been anyone. Personally, I do not have a vested interest in UFO research. Yes, I've written a few books about immortal spiritual beings because I'm interested in the subject. But I haven't sold enough of those books to pay for the time it took to write them. It is a hobby. I earn my living as a small business consultant. It is not my intention to justify, explain, or remedy any disability to perceive or understand the mysteries of extraterrestrial existence, UFOs, government agendas, or spiritual abilities. Nor is it intended to educate, persuade, or promote to anyone that any of these phenomena exist. Furthermore, what I may or may not think about any of this is irrelevant. Moreover, I have burned all the original documents, including the envelope I received from Mrs. McElroy, I do not want to spend the rest of my life being hounded by UFO researchers, government agents, grocery store tabloids, reporters, UFO advocates and debunkers alike, or anyone else. Any proofs or attempts to authenticate the assertion that Mrs. McElroy actually interviewed an alien in 1947 will have to be done by others. Ripley says, believe it or not. I say, what's true for you is true for you. Lawrence R. Spencer, Editor.